pleasant afternoon. Attention, please. Attention, please. There's a very important notice here. Um, you may see a note on some seats in the church, and it's marked "Do not sit." Now it doesn't mean it only means that the seat itself is damaged. Do not sit on it. It's not the entire row, but the seat. So you may find a note there, do not sit. It means that the seat itself is damaged. Okay? Now does everybody understand? And also uh, for the washrooms, I must say to you that the washrooms are at the right to, are at, is at to my right, so I'm standing here. The washroom is to my right, at the back there. And for the senior persons, the senior ones, you can use the washroom to the right of the stage, right here, where I'm indicating. The senior persons, all right? But the washroom for the other, the regular people are at the back, to my right there. Okay? Does everybody understand what I just said? Yes. All right. We'll begin in a moment. Just give us a... Okay, the washroom to my right, downstairs. All right? To my right, to the back, downstairs. For the regular persons, the senior persons will be used in the washroom to my right on this side. Thank you so much. We'll be starting in just a short while. Bless the Lord.
pleasant afternoon once again to one and all. Indeed, it's a very, very difficult time. We are gathered here today to celebrate the life of our dear sister Stephanie Rosemary James. And indeed, it's, it's a, an occasion that really we do not want to be a part of at times, but we just have to. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. And our condolence goes out to the family, and the entire family of our dear sister Stephanie James. Our respects so, to the host pastor of this church, the members of the committee, and the entire congregation. Pleasant afternoon to every one of you. And at this time, we are going to go into the tributes. And we have the first item on the program, the special song by a good friend of the deceased. And that is Miss Judian McKee. We're going to call her this time. Sister Judian, can you come? She is going to render to us a special song at this time. Judian. A pleasant good afternoon to everyone. Stephanie is my good friend. We went to school together. And Stephanie knew that I could sing, and she always wanted me to go up and sing in school. So I must have to win that song. Sometimes you wonder why Tears come into my eyes and burden seems to be much more than you can be. But God is drawing near. His promise is a true. Tis a real language and God understands. God sees those tears of a broken hearted soul. He sees those drive them when they fall. God whisper alone with man and takes them by the hand. Tis a real language and God God sees those tears 
of a broken hearted soul. He sees those tears and he drives them when they fall. God whisper alone with man and takes them by them. Tears are a language. And God Thank you so much, Sister Julian. And we understand the emotions that are mixed with that song, Tears Are a Language. Indeed, God understands every tear. He understands every situation that we go through. We're going to call uh, Mr. Dexter James at this time, the son of the late Stephanie James. Mr. Dexter James. He's going to come and do a poem for us at this time. Dexter. Hi, good afternoon everyone. Thanks everyone for coming. Um, this is a short poem that I did for my mom. In the gentle whispers of the breeze, a memory lingers, brings me to my knees. Stephanie, a name etched in the starlight, a mother's love, a beacon burning bright, her laughter, a melody in the air. In every sunset, she lingers there. Though time has claimed its solemn toll, her love resides within my soul. Through tears, and, through tears that fall like morning dew, I cherish the moments precious and true. Stephanie, in the tapestry of my days, your love, a timeless song forever plays. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brother Dexter James, and indeed you are very strong. I don't know if I was in your shoe if I could have made that. You're strong. Amen. We have Miss Kareem Salhab. Kareem Salhab, if I have the name right. And she's going to come at this time and do a special song for us. Kareem Salhab. Okay, my, correct, my, my wrong here. It's missed. Mr. Mr. Karim, Mr. Karim Salhab, sing for us, my brother. Pleasant day, everyone. My deepest condolences to the family.
sorry about that. We have a little technical problem here. But we're going to move on. So in the meantime, we're going to call Miss Beverly. Uh, she comes to do a special. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's a song or a poem, but she's going to do a special. That's Miss Beverly. We call on you at this time to do your part. Good afternoon for each and every one of us here today. It's a very sad day for each and every one of us as you take a tone and me. And today is a very sad day only for the family, not only for the family, but for those who knew Stephanie. Tessa, Stephanie and I had been friends for over 35 years. As we was both employed at Deco Industry together. After we gained employment elsewhere, we were still keep we still keep our good friendship going. We spoke regularly on the phone, and when she visits St. George's where I works, she will pass by to check up on me and to give me some old jokes that she picked up. That was her. She always have her old joke. All through we had differences while having certain conversation, but I always used to tell her she shouldn't try to lose good friends, but to keep them. Just for Christmas, Steph had called me and said to me, don't overwork yourself. There is life after Christmas. Knowing that she knew a few years ago, I was very sick. And telling her about my illness, he took a role of her. When I told her about it, it was a very dangerous sickness and as a breast cancer patient. She was called every day to check up on me and crying. And I used to tell her, she can't try to break me down. She has to give me the support I need. And she had to be there for me. I will be okay. And today I'm standing here to witness my good friend funeral here today. While I was at hospital, she would call a regular and even bring my meals to me, especially on Sunday, because my family was all the way from St. David's, and she would tell them, don't come today. Hearing about her, hearing about her past, it took a real tone. I never thought that my dear friend would have died before oh, me knowing my condition here. But the Lord knows best. To her children, Melissa, Stefan, and Dexter, and the rest of her family who knew me very well and as a family friend to them for, for this 35 years, she introduced me to them. And we, we you know, we we're very close at each other. I never think. None of them never passed by before saying, Miss Bev. Even though I see them, they will bother, like, Miss Bev, Miss Bev, look, Miss Bev. And I really appreciate these things. And um, to the family, I know, let the good relationship with me and you all keep the same. I wouldn't forget. Especially Dexter, who was with home with her, and he will always try and say, Bev, 
And when I went to look for them and passing off a debt, I could hear he say, I don't know where you'll get them old jokes again. May she soul rest in peace. Those special memories for you will always bring a smile. Only if I could have back, if I could have you back for just a little while. There will be there will be seats and talk again, just like we used to be. We always seem to be very much always and willing to do. That fact, you are no longer there, will cause me pain. But you will never in my heart until we meet again. And for those of us who walk with Stephanie at the different institutions, like Antoine would walk, home and bedding, and Deco Industry, I think we all assembled here, some of us are here, and I could say on behalf of them too, condolence to the family. Thank you so much, Ms. Beverly. Well done, well said. And indeed, you can see from what she said, she was a very close friend of the deceased. And that is just to tell you that we are not promised that tomorrow we're living today and we do not know what tomorrow holds, but the Lord holds our tomorrow. And I just want to implore on you at this point, those of you who do not know the Lord as your personal Savior, get to know him, to have that personal connection, that personal relationship with him. Amen. I've known Melissa for a number of years. I worked at the National Water and Sewer Authority. My respects to Mr. Smith and, of course, uh, Brother Kevin and uh, Sister Henry and so on, and most of the other folks that I'm seeing here this afternoon. Pleasant afternoon to you all. Amen. And my name is Dennis Andrew, if you forgot. <laughs> but it's so nice to see so many of you here this afternoon. Amen. And I just want to encourage you. God's promises are true. Amen. He said His grace is sufficient for us and His strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. Amen. I'm going to call at this time Miss Helen James, and she's going to do a special song for us. Miss Helen James. Miss James. Good, after <coughs> Good afternoon, everyone. I am, I am Stephanie Moore, and I come to, and I come here to pay the last respect to my daughter. And I want to sing a little song for her. The song is, um, he, he will understand why. And Revelation 21. Revelation 21, 4 said, There is a time to die and a time to live. And I know that she's happy with the Lord. So I'm singing, um, If when you give the best of your service, telling the world that the Savior has come, be not dismayed when men shall reveal you. He'll understand and say, well done. Oh, when I come to the end of my journey, weary of life and the battle is won, Carrying the staff and the cross of redemption, he'll understand and say, well done. Misunderstood 
the Savior of sinners hung on the cross. He was God's only Son. Oh, hear him call, Father in heaven, not my will, but thine be done. Oh, when I come to the end of my journey, weary of life, and the battle is won, Carrying the star and the cross of redemption, he'll understand and say, Well done. If when this life of labor is ending and the reward of the race you have run. Oh, take the sweet rest, prepare for the faithful, will be his bless and find well done. Oh, when I come to the end of my journey, weary of life, and the battle is won. They carry the staff and the cross of redemption. He'll understand and say, Well done. But if you try and fail in your trying, and sore and scared, from the work you begun, take up your cross and run quickly to meet him. He'll understand. He'll understand. Not a round of applause. I think that it was wonderfully done. Your me, his word. I've been set free. My God, my Savior, His ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. My chains are gone. I've been set free, my God, my Savior, His ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine. But God who calls me here below will be forever mine. Will be forever mine. You are forever mine. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr. Karim Salha. Put your hands together for him again. I think he deserves another lusty round of applause. Well done.
So we have a combination of old and young, or aged and young. Let me not say old, aged and young. Amen. Praise the wonderful name of the Lord. God is good. Hey. You can make him yours today. As you heard the song, he is forever mine. You can make the Lord, Lord of your lives today. For tomorrow is not promised. We're going to call the granddaughter of the deceased, that's Miss Rachel Chase. She is going to come at this time and do a song. Miss Rachel Chase. Put your hands together for her. She comes. Broken down and tired of living life on a merry-go-round. You can find a fighter, but I see you, so we go walk it out. Move mountains, we go walk it out and move mountains. In our eyes, oh, our eyes like the day, our eyes, oh, our eyes not afraid, our eyes, oh, and I do it a thousand times again. In our eyes, oh, I like the waves will rise up, in spite of the anchors up, and I do it a thousand times again for you for you for you for you when the silence isn't quiet and it feels like it's getting hard to breathe and I know you feel like dying, but I promise we'll take the world to its feet. Move mountains, bring it to its feet. Move mountains, and our eyes out, our eyes at the day, our eyes out. Our eyes not afraid, our eyes up, and we'll do it a thousand times again. For you, for you, for you, for you. And for that we die each other, and for that we have each other, and we arise, we arise, and we will find so. Inside the tide, I rise up in spite of the air. I rise a thousand times again. I will rise up 
highlight the ways we rise up in spite of the acres. And we'll do it a thousand times again for you. Thank you very much, Ms. Rachel Chase. Very well done. And bold enough as a granddaughter and strong enough to do it the way that you have done it. Praise God. Give a round of applause once again. Amen. I'll rise up. We will rise. But we have to know the Lord as our personal Savior. As I used to tell the folks at the National Water and Sewage Authority where I worked for a number of years, you got to Prepare to meet the Lord. So you live good with people, yes. You do what you have to do, yes, in life. But you have to make sure that you make sure, make extra sure that you do what you have to do. So that if the Lord comes, you're ready. You are ready. If he puts in your appearance, his appearance, you are ready to meet him. If he takes you when no one expects him to take you, you are ready. I had about three experiences. My mother suffered for a while and she died. My dad went to bed a Wednesday night and never woke up the Thursday morning. That was a sudden one. And then of course my daughter died at a young age, suddenly cut off. So you understand, I had the good, the bad and the ugly. I had it all. But God gives the strength. His grace is sufficient for us. Praise the name of the Lord. At this time, we are going to have a slideshow. All right. We are going to be presented with a slideshow of the deceased Stephanie Rosemary James and get an idea, a picture of her lifestyle. Just about a couple of weeks before I had a chat with her, very jovial person, as somebody commented, very, always have a joke to give. Always have something to tell you to cause you to laugh. Amen. And I was so shocked, torn apart, when I got the news from Melissa, her daughter, that she had passed. And may God rest her soul in peace. Praise the name of the Lord. So we're going to have a slideshow at this time. Praise God. And then shortly afterwards, we are going to go into the main order of the service. Praise the Lord.
to know there is a place up there for people like you that you have to be prepared to meet the Lord. I cannot overemphasize the fact that you need to be prepared. We do not have a tomorrow as I said before so make it right today. Bless the Lord. Amen. At this time we are going to go into the main order of the service. I will now turn over the other portion of that service to Reverend Prescott, Reverend Prescott, and he is going to come and take over from here at this time. Amen. May God continue to strengthen Melissa, Stephan, Dexter, the entire family in this very, very difficult time. Praise the Lord. Reverend Prescott, at this time. Good evening, one and all. At this time, let me just invite the family to do their final bits of viewing before we proceed with the commencement of the main service. So we are going to allow a few moments for the viewing, final viewing, after which we will um, close the casket and proceed with the procession. So we want to invite the family to do that and we will meet with the family to have some prayers. So we take a few minutes before we start. Thank you.
name is Reverend Prescott. Um, I have with me Reverend Christopher Craig Duncan, as well as Pastor Leonard Julian, who will be leading us in this aspect of the service. We just want to um, pray for God's strength and God's comfort in love for the family at this time, and at the same time to extend our sincere condolences to you on behalf of the Methodist Church as we prepare to proceed with the beginning of the service. We just want to ask Reverend Craig Duncan to lead us in our work. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He let me beside the still water. He restores my soul. Oh, my Father, as we come here this evening, God, to give thanks and to offer a final farewell to our loved one. We ask you, God, we are welcome. Your Holy Spirit in our midst, and your Spirit, God, will comfort the family. Your Spirit, God, will touch them when they need to be touched most. And you continue God to give them the strength and the hope to continue God to live on. Father God, we ask God the words that are proclaimed through this message. And even in this service, God, with words that will continue God to give the family that strength that they need. And they can continue God to hold on to you. So be with us and be with all others who are here as we lead and guide our service. In just let me pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. I just want to commend the family to God's presence and God's hands and pray that God's comfort and consolation will be with you at this time. Whenever they are ready, so give them some time and whenever they are ready.
We invite everyone to stand at this moment, please. and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived the day, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Our Savior Christ Jesus abolished death and brought life and immortality light through the gospel. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of death and of hell. Because I live, you will live also. And death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning no crying, for pain, for the first things have passed away. We continue as we turn into an order of service for him, which is 23A, how great what
Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Psalm 91, verse 1. This was one of Seth's favorite Bible verses, and now she is resting in the shadow of the Almighty. As I stand here to deliver this eulogy on behalf of the family, I realize how grateful we were to have Stephanie as a mother, a sister, a daughter, a friend, a cousin, and many of the other titles she bore in the lives of everyone gathered here. She was truly an amazing woman who was kind, caring, hardworking, and one of the most loving person in the world. Stephanie Rosemary James, also known as Steph, was born on August 20th, 1968, in the community of Grand Mall. About the age of 14, she moved with her mother, Helen Melina James, to the community of Bolio, where they lived happily ever after with her late father, Eli James. Stephanie attended the St. George's Methodist School, following which she attended the Boca Junior Secondary School. She was a vivacious and determined young woman, and at a very young age, showed interest in fashion and sewing. This was evident as she gained employment at the Deco Industries Limited, where she worked for over 20 years. She also worked at the Antoine's Woodwork and then at the Foam and Bedding, where she became a specialist in cushion and upholstery repairs. Despite her hard working nature, Stephanie enjoyed playing cricket in her younger days and was part of the Northerners Club. I cannot recall if she was able to bat or bowl properly, but all I could remember was that she would wash and dry her uniform and attend the games with a high level of enthusiasm. Brothers and sisters, Stephanie was a fighter and always had a big dream to start up her own small business. With encouragement and support from her daughter, she opened up her business, Stephanie's Fashion and Sewing Services, sometime in the year 2012, where she provided sewing services to the public. She was very proficient in the area of upholstery, especially in recovering couch and sewing cushion covers. Indeed, her work was flawless and her customers were always elated with the quality of the final product. Stephanie was also known as the gunner in the community because many of the young men in the area contacted her to slim down or gun their pants. A few times we heard her say, boy, how these pants go fit if you want it so small? They will reply, it's an art. I will push my foot in a plastic bag and then slide it on. And that's how it will go on easy. She would then laugh and do as requested. Personally, Stephanie, when growing up, was a glamour girl. She loved to dress her best and to be in the latest fashion. Even up until her very last, she made that extra effort to look good. Steph would call her daughter frequently, saying, Millie, I bought something nice today. You will like it. Make sure you come up early to see it, because I leave my shop to go home at 4 p.m. She will then plague her daughter every few minutes thereafter to make sure that she came home immediately after 4 to see the item. When they finally met, she would show her the item and even offer to give her because she could have bought another one. That's how my sister was, a sharing and loving individual. Stephanie sacrificed 
her entire life for her children till her last breath. She had her first child, Melissa Chase, at a very young age. They were like two peas in a pod. You would never see one and not the other. Even in her final hours on the dark morning, it was spent with Melissa and her son-in-law, Richard, who she also called Pickerfoot. Her last words to them were, I'm going home to take a rest. I will call you later. But God had other plans for her. Her second child, Stefan N. James, the anaconda, as she would refer to him due to his powerful nature, was loved by her dearly. He recalls them having a wonderful feast over the Christmas holiday and will cherish that time forever. Her last baby, Dexter James, which she referred to as father or bird, was very close to her heart. He now, he now reflects on the unwavering support, love, care, and bonding moments that they both shared. Her, her companion, Gerard John, whom she shared a beautiful daughter, will forever reminisce on the good and happy times they had, especially in the latter years of her life, which she had often said was her best life. She loved her grandchildren, Aidan and Rachel, unconditionally. They will miss the half of chicken and drinks that she often left for them. She loved her mother and siblings very much. She used to enjoy the pep talks with her mom and the singing before going home on evenings. My mom used to sing her Methodist hymns and songs to her. And Steph would say, I love this song. One of Steph's favorite song was Trust and Obey by the famous hymn writer, John H. Samus. Verse 1 says, and I quote, When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on the way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. End of quote. Stephanie also had daily conversations with her siblings, Gaga, Roger, Clarence, Jenny, Maureen, and myself. And also her close friends, Stephanie, and also her close friends. Stephanie sacrificed more than we ever know, we'll ever know. And even when she was putting everyone else before herself, she still made time to listen to all our problems. It's difficult to imagine she's not here with us. We love her more than words could possibly say. Everyone who was fortunate enough to know her was in awe of everything she achieved. And warmth and happiness she brought to us cannot be overstated. In closing, ladies and gentlemen, our brothers and sisters, as we gather here today to remember and commemorate the life of the late Stephanie Rosemary James, let us bid her farewell as we mourn the loss of a lively, dignified soul, a soul that brought joy and fulfillment to many whose legacy will live on and be forever etched on our minds and our hearts. We will miss her dearly, the queen of fashion. Thank you. But before I leave, I just want to recognize the Minister, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Trade and Export Development, Honorable Joseph Andal. I guess I did not see him when I started, so welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, my dear brother, and also we acknowledge your presence with us here as you come to support the family. Let us turn to God as we go to prayer, and after which we'll have a tribute by Mr. Dennis Andrew, a friend of the family. Let us go to God in prayer. Most gracious God, we 
We turn to you in the sorrow and the grief of our bereavement, praying that we may find the strength we need in your sustaining grace, so that even as we come to mourn the death of one whom we knew and beloved, we may be so overcome by this trial, but we may have the, the faith turning in you and in the goodness of your holy name. Assure us, O Lord, O God, that death is at the end of those who trust in you. And may our hearts be so composed in the Holy Spirit that all fear and bitterness may be swallowed up in the light and peace you give to your troubled children. Through Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, whom by the Holy Spirit minister to us in our weakness, and by the victory of your Son, Jesus Christ, has given us the pledge of eternal life to live with you. We pray at above our present distress and sorrow, and the shed of the light of your grace and the glory upon us, through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. We have a tribute, and after which we have honor a hymn. Thank you so much, and a pleasant afternoon once again. Uh, just want to do this special song. It's a very comforting song. Trust that you will enjoy. Praise God. Of ten you wondered why Tears come into your eyes And burdens seem to be much more than you can bear But God is standing near He sees your falling tears, tears are a language God understands, and God sees the tears of a broken hearted soul he sees every tear and he hears them when they fall God weeps along with men Turned out the way that you have planned, but God remembers you. His promise is a true. Tis our language. 
God understands. God sees the tears of a broken hearted soul. He sees every tear and he hears them when they fall. God weeps along with man and takes him by the hand. Tears are a language God understands God sees the tears Of a broken hearted soul He sees every tear and he hears them when they fall. God weeps along with man and takes him by the hand. Tears are God weeps along with man and takes him by the hand. Tis our language that God understands. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you. Let us stand as we sing to the glory of God. I will sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. How he left his home in glory for the cross of Calvary. Congregation, please stand.
Amen. Please be seated. As we turn now to the word of God, where we continue to find our strength and our comfort and our hope. As we have our Old Testament reading, which will be done for us by Miss Killian Waldron, the Sunnis. It is taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, reading from verses 1 through to verse 13. Good afternoon, everyone. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 to 13. A time for everything. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which, that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. Mm. What profit had he that worketh in that whereat he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God has given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he had set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank mm -hmm. you, my sister. We have our next scripture reading coming to us this evening from the book of Romans, chapter 8, reading from verse 31 through to 39. And this will be done for us by Miss Sherry Noel, a friend of the family. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in Christ. The second reading, reading from Romans chapter 8, 31 to 39. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for us all. Would he, not with him, also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Jesus Christ who died. Yes, who was raised. Who is at the right hand of God who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress 
or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, not anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. I say thanks to our sister for leading us in God's word. After the singing of another hymn, we'll have our gospel reading taken to us, and this will be done by Pastor Julian Leonard, and he will take us through. Let us stand as we sing our song of comfort, the goodness of God. Thank you. 
as we hear from the Gospel according to John chapter 14, reading from verse 6 through 1 through to verse 6 and verse 27, and Pastor Julian Lender will take us through. We have a change that we would not be reading the passages outlined in the order of service, but rather we'll be, I'll be reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verse 17 through to 27. John, chapter 11, 17 through to 27 to you, God. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Verse 27. She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. This is the gospel of Christ. You may be seated. In preparation for what God has in store for us today, we now have an item by the church choir, and after which we'll hear from our superintendent minister, the Reverend Silbert Prescott. But you're not alone 
Thank you, choir, for leading us and for bringing comfort to our hearts and our souls as we continue to give God thanks for the life and witness of Sister Stephanie Rosemary James. First of all, let me take this opportunity to greet one and all in the wonderful name and Savior Jesus Christ, the one who continues to strengthen and sustain us in times of difficulty and in moments when we experience challenge and grief. Secondly, I would want to extend thanks on behalf of the Methodist Church in Grenada to Pastor Colin Matthew, the pastor of this church, for making the facilities of this church available for us, the Methodist Church, to hold the service according to Methodist rites. We truly appreciate your hospitality and kindness, and we pray that God will continue to bless you and your entire congregation. Finally, thirdly, I want to extend on behalf of the Methodist Church sincere condolences to the family of Sister Stephanie, and pray that even in your hour of grief that you will know that God is one who is able to comfort and strengthen us in these difficult and challenging experiences. Your life has been plunged into mourning due to the death of a loved one, and we know that it is not easy. And we pray that God will be with you to help you to journey through these difficult and challenging experiences. May God be with you, may God bless you, and may you know that God is a God who is always with his people in moments like these. So may God be with you and may God comfort you in these difficult experiences of your life. This evening, brothers and sisters, I want to invite us to reflect on the gospel reading that was just read to us from John's Gospel, chapter 11, the story of the resurrection of Lazarus. My text this evening comes from some verses from this passage. It reads, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And those who live and believe in me will never die. I am the resurrection and the life, says Jesus. Let us go to God in prayer. God of the resurrection, we give you thanks for all that you offer us in Jesus. For the hope that you give us when death seems to triumph over our experience. For the hope of new life, which you offer us through the blood of Christ. And for the comfort that you offer us through the power you promise us that you will never leave us or forsake us. And we pray comfort in love, one that is sufficient for these challenges and this difficult experience that they are currently experiencing. As we prepare, O oh God, to reflect on your word, we ask that you will speak to this your servant and speak through me. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our son. I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me even though they die, yet shall they live. Brothers and sisters, the resurrection is the heart of the Christian belief. Without the resurrection, meaningless. Indeed, the radiance of the resurrection is always seen against the bleak backdrop of death. And without death, resurrection is not possible. In other words, to experience the power of the resurrection, one must be confronted with first the defeat and the horrors of death. 
That is the proclamation of the Christian faith. A proclamation that gives us hope in challenging moments such as these. Brothers and sisters, as we contemplate, as we reflect on the story of the resurrection, I want to invite us to reflect on the resurrection story of Lazarus. In the story of the resurrection of Lazarus, the brightness of his resurrection is seen in light of the despairing experience of his death. In the absence of his death, there is no triumphant edge to the story. There is no glory in the story without Lazarus's death and his subsequent resurrection. And so this evening, brothers and sisters, I want to invite us to reflect for a few moments on this story to see what we can learn from God and from this story as we continue to try to come to terms with this loss of our loved one. In this story, brothers and sisters, first of all, it is unique to John's gospel. This story of the resurrection of Jesus is only found in John. The other gospel writers does not tell us about this story. And in the story, we encounter scenes of Jesus that is somewhat a bit of a contrast. In this story, we, we experience the absence of Jesus and we experience a Jesus who is someone who is with us in the plight of suffering. We experience a Jesus who knows what it is like to experience human infirmities. And we see a Jesus who seemed to be divine and profoundly human. In this story, I commend to you this Jesus as you mourn the tragic loss of your loved one. Someone who is near and dear to your heart. Praying that in Jesus, you will find the strength that you need to cope with the challenges of your present experience. And so, as we gather to reflect on the life of our dear sister Stephanie, I want to invite us into the experience of a little family from Bethany caught in the midst of death and grief as you are as well. Today. So as we do, it is my hope that the comfort and the solace that Jesus imparted to this family in this story will be yours as we reflect on this story. So we pick up the story with Mary who comes to Jesus and she comes to Jesus literally on bended knees. One could kind of sense the disappointment here. My brother would not have died. Words which were echoed by her sister Martha in verse 23. One would expect that when they summoned Jesus, that when they called Jesus, that when they told Jesus that Lazarus was ill, that Jesus would drop everything and hurry to their aid. They expected that Jesus would come immediately. However, in the story, we see that Jesus procrastinated. Jesus delayed. And he delayed for two days. And it was only when the news broke that Lazarus had died that Jesus eventually set out for Bethany. As a matter of fact, by the time Jesus got to Lazarus, Lazarus had already been dead. He had been in the tomb for how many days? For four days. Indeed, one could imagine by this time how upset the sisters felt. It is like calling the fire brigade and they come after the house have burned down. So we could imagine how these sisters felt. You could imagine some of the things that they would have wanted to say to Jesus. You could imagine 
some of the expression of disappointment that might have come from their lips. Perhaps they might have said to Jesus all of the things that we say to someone who turn up too late for something. For example, where were you when we needed you, Jesus? If you had come when we called you, you would have spared us all this pain. Why are you only now arriving, Jesus? Don't you care about what we are going through? Don't you care about the suffering of our loved ones? I mean, these are questions that surfaces that we ask God when we are faced with tragedies. These are the questions that comes to our mind when misfortune intervenes in our lives. These are the questions that we ask God when God allows our loved ones to experience death. I mean, we think of all the things that God could have done and should have done, and we wonder why God did not do it. Not so? Indeed, how do we interpret God's delays, God's silence, and God's inaction in moments when we are faced with tragedy? How do we interpret God when God seems to be absent when we are going through trials and difficulties and challenges? The best and perhaps the only answer to such questions, brothers and sisters, is for us to trust God, who knows and sees the bigger picture. One songwriter puts it this way in some words. He wrote, God is too wise to be mistaken. God is too good to be unkind. So when you don't understand, and when you can't see God's plan, when you can't trace God's hand, trust God's heart. God is a God of love. And God promises never to leave or forsake God's people. Brothers and sisters, even in God's delays, even in the difficulties and challenges of life, God is working out God's plans and God's purposes for us. Friends, in the midst of your grief, in the midst of your loss, I want to remind us that God has not abandoned us. I want to remind us that God is a God who promised. That's what he says, God is a present help in time of trouble. Therefore, our heart will not fear. Brothers and sisters, even in the midst of all your questions and challenges, I want to remind you that God knows. God no understands what you are going through. And God is ready and able to comfort you in these difficult and challenging moments of your experience. Those who know your name, this army says, O Lord, knows that you never forsake them. Whenever they call upon, or whoever call upon the name of the Lord, this army says, will never be put to shame. So I want to encourage you to continue to call upon God. To place your situation and your trials and your challenges in the hands of this God, who is able to comfort you when you mourn and strengthen you when you are going through challenges like these. As we continue with the story, brothers and sisters, we see that Mary called on Jesus when Jesus finally arrived. Je when Jesus got to the place, he found scenes of mourning happening. The people were in crying and they were in pain. Even Jesus himself could not hold back the tears from his eyes. At this time, it seemed as if hope had all been lost. And it seems as though Jesus had been reduced to tears. And even the mourners are surprised when they saw Jesus crying. They says, 
see how he loved him? Couldn't he who opened the eyes of the blind stop this man from dying? I mean, these are important statements. It says, see how he loved him? Couldn't he who opened the eyes of the blind stop this man from dying? The point here, brothers and sisters, is the fact that Jesus loved Lazarus and could have done something to prevent Lazarus from dying. Yet Jesus allows it, raises some serious questions, not only for Martha and Mary, but also for all of us who lose loved ones and suffer loss when we know that God could help. The question is, why don't God shield us? Why don't God shield those that he loves from suffering and from pain and from death? And perhaps, brothers and sisters, the question that was on the mind of the sisters of Mary, and of Lazarus, sorry, and perhaps that is the question that is on your mind too, the sisters of the family of Stephanie. If God loves us, perhaps you say, then why did God allow our mom, our sister, our friend to die? If God loves Stephanie, why didn't he do something to stop the tragedy that she experienced? Notice, friends, what Mary says to Jesus at the beginning of this passage. She says, Lord, behold, the one whom you love is ill. The word behold here implies surprise. They didn't expect it. In other words, it, ex it appears as if the sisters were surprised that the one who Jesus loved was allowed to suffer illness. If Jesus loved Lazarus, why did he allow Lazarus to get sick and die? When he could have healed him, and save the family from that misery. In all honesty, brothers and sisters, when we experience suffering, don't we wonder how much our experience could represent God's love for us? When we experience difficulties, don't we find it difficult to match those things with the love and the care and concern of God? Friends, never be surprised that those who Jesus love experience misfortune. Because the love of Christ does not guarantee immunity from sickness, from suffering, from pain, or from death. But rather, God promises us that nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ. Paul puts it this way in Romans chapter 8. He says, Nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ. Can hardship, can suffering, can pain? No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. Brothers and sisters, even though Jesus loved Lazarus, he allowed Lazarus to suffer illness and death. Even though Jesus shared a close relationship with the family of Lazarus, their life was still plunged into, into chaos and tragedy. And sometimes, brothers and sisters, the truth is, the same thing will happen to us. Not because God loves us and we love God doesn't mean that difficulties wouldn't happen. But what that means is that even in the midst of the darkest experiences of life, God is still with us. That when we question God's power to help and to aid us in times of difficulty and challenges, God is still able. When we wonder if God cares about us, God cares and God loves us and God comes to us when we need God's most, brothers and sisters. The good news of this passage, brothers and sisters, is not so much that Lazarus or Mary or Martha experience challenges or difficulties in their life, 
But the good news of this passage is that they are not abandoned by God. And that is the good news for you today, brothers and sisters. Even though you experience the death of a loved one, of a loved one, God has not abandoned you. Because he promised always to be with you and to strengthen you in these dark and difficult moments of your experience. The promise of God, brothers and sisters, is therefore, is that death is no match for Jesus. Even though Lazarus was dead, that was not the end of the story. The truth is, brothers and sisters, death doesn't have the last word for God. Death might cause us pain and suffering and hardship, but for God, death is no match because God in Jesus defeated death on the cross. God might not always be there to prevent the storms of life from unfolding its wings of terror in our experience. But the truth is, brothers and sisters, God is always with us to see us through and to carry us when we cannot carry ourselves. Finally, brothers and sisters, we come to a word that is at the very heart of the Gospel of John. The word, believe. It is scattered throughout this Gospel from beginning to end. And it is found more times in this Gospel of John than any other Gospel put together, that all the other Gospels that are put together. Indeed, brothers and sisters, the reason why John writes this gospel is that readers would come to believe in Jesus and that by believing in Jesus, they will have life in him. The word belief is at the heart of the conversation between Jesus and Martha in this passage. After pouring out her heart to Jesus, he says to her, your brother will rise again. And she responds, I know that he will rise again on the last day. In other words, what she is really saying to Jesus, what good is this going to be to us now? We know that he is going to be resurrected, but sometime down in the future. As far as Mary and Martha is concerned, dear brother, had been properly dead. He had been in the tomb in the grave for four days. In fact, when Jesus asked them to remove the stone, could you remember what this says? Lord, he stinketh. You see, brothers and sisters, Martha knew the scripture. And she believed that there would be a resurrection at the end of time. But what Jesus was calling her here to, brothers and sisters, was believe in Jesus' power to do something for them in that moment. Back in chapter 5, verse 21 and verse 25, Jesus had already declared his power over it. He says, Indeed, just as the Father raises up the dead, and gives them new life. So also the Son of Man gives life to those who he wishes. He goes on to say, Very truly I tell you, the hour is coming when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. And it was this kind of faith that Jesus was calling Mary and Martha to. To recognize that Jesus had the power to do something, even at that moment when everything seems to be lost. Jesus' words to Martha was, do you believe this? Do you believe that Jesus is able to do something for your brother even in his death? And Martha responds with these words. She said, Lord, I believe. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Do you believe in Jesus, my brothers and sisters? 
Do you believe that Jesus is able to help you and to sustain you even in these difficult moments? The faith that Jesus tried to raise up in Martha is the same faith that he is trying to raise up in you today. A faith that sees beyond our darkest hours of life. That God is able to do more for us than we can think or ask or imagine. And so as you mourn the loss of your loved one today, I invite you to believe in this God. To trust in this God. And it is through trust and hope in this God that we will be victorious over death and the grave and the suffering and pain that comes with it. As you go through these difficult moments ahead, and we know that the days are going to be difficult, I invite you to trust in this Jesus. This God for whom nothing is impossible is able to help you. So place your life, place your challenges, place your questions in the hand and in the heart of this God and experience the power that he alone can give and nothing in this world can take away. So may God be with you. May God bless you and may God sustain you in these difficult and challenging moments. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Let us pause for a few moments of reflection as we ponder these words. One of the ways in which we affirm our faith in God in moments like these is through the words of the Apostles' Creed. And I want to invite us to stand together now as you are able and let us declare our faith and our trust in Jesus as it is written, ascribed in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our prayer of thanksgiving. You may, you may be seated. Yes. Our prayer of thanksgiving. Praise be to you, O God, our Father, who created us in your own image for eternal fellowship with you. Praise and thanksgiving to you, O Christ, our Lord and our God, who have overcome the sharpness of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers and are now seated at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. Praise and blessing be to you, O Holy Spirit, God our Comforter, who bear witness within us of our acceptance with the Father and have become the pledge of our eternal inheritance. All praise and glory, blessing and honor Thanksgiving and worship be to you, O blessed Trinity, 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We bless your name for the life of our departed sister, Stephanie. Stephanie Rosemary James. We give you thanks for the joy and, and the blessing of her life. Who has brought to others for her service to her generation according to your will. And for every happy remembrance of her life, we bless you for your mercy and goodness which have followed her all the days of her life. And now the trials of this world are over and death itself is past. Receive her into your perfect kingdom and bring us with all who have lived and serve you faithfully to the fullness of your eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here we shall sing a hymn will your anchor hold and during the singing of this hymn an offering will be collected.
Let us pray. Father, you have blessed us abundantly with every good and perfect gift. You have given us, Lord God, the gift of life. And in that gift, O oh gracious God, we have seen and experienced the joy and the beauty of the life which you have given us all. And at this time, Lord God, remember the life of our departed sister Stephanie. We thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us with her. And we thank you for the time that you have allowed her to be with us on this side of your vineyard. The gift of God that we have returned, the monetary gifts, is indeed an indication that you have given them unto us. And having returned but a token is an indication that we, O oh gracious God, deserve to give more than just the gift of money, but to give our very life to you so that you will continue to use us for the honor and glory of your most holy and precious name. So we ask you, Lord, to bless these gifts. Bless those who have given and even those who have not to give. Lord, we pray that you will indeed bless us all. And as you bless us, we may continue to serve you as our Lord and Savior and be thankful to you for the many gifts that you have bestowed upon us. So bless these gifts and bless us all, we pray. In Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Can the congregation please stand as we now go into the commendation? Eternal God, who have made us all in his image and hate nothing that you have made, You have given us your son to be our redemption. We commend our sister, Stephanie Rosemary, into your perfect mercy and wisdom, and let eternal light shine upon her. We pray the Lord's prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen and amen. We now have a hymn, it is well with my soul. Yes, as it was here.
passes over him and it is gone. But the place thereof shall be no more. But the mercies of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting to those who care him and on their children's journeys.
Well, we, we saw them. I do, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Be, be in a while. Yeah. yeah. All right. We don't sit down and get some coffee. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, please. Pass it. It's right on there by the transmission. It's right on there. You guys, the same one team was another is another way? Yes, the same one is another way. We don't have a
Good evening, everyone. We continue to give God thanks for the life of our dear sister. We sing, What a friend we have in
will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We know that if this earthly house of our tabernacle be dissolved, we have a building from God, a house not made of hands, eternal and in the heavens. Since our dear sister Stephanie has departed out of this life, and the Almighty God in His mercy has taken her unto Himself. We therefore commit her body to the ground, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, earth to earth. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection which is to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord and our Amen. All right, gentlemen, if you push them in, push them in. Huh? Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he had built and redeemed his people. He had raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers. And to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he swore to our forefather Abraham, that which he would give us, that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without prayer, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the priest of the Lord and prepare his ways. To give knowledge of salvation to his people for remission of their sins, to obtain the mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high have visited us, to give light to them that in darkness, and the show of death, and to guide our feet in the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, From henceforth blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so says the Spirit for the rest from the labors. O merciful God, well, rather let us pray. O merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all comfort, raise us up, we pray, from death of sin to the new life of righteousness that when we shall depart this life we shall be found acceptable in your sight this we pray through jesus christ our lord amen grant to the bereaved consolation and faith in this time of distress and trial the blessed hope in the coming of your kingdom the sustaining grace in the fellowship of your people and steadfastness in the service of your name and the doing of your will 
through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Support us, O oh Lord, all the day long of this troublous life, until the shadows lengthen, the evening comes, the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant unto us safe lodging, holy rest and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the sweet by and by. Right?
off, shots off. All right.
benediction. And now, in the blessing of God, the Father Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest, remain, and abide with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless. Ask me not to tend to say it, but I should be doing it. Ask me not to tend to say it.